The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High and the Lord will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So we celebrate today the Immaculate Conception. And the Immaculate Conception would be evident to us in the gospel today from these words. The angel Gabriel came to her and said, Hail, full of grace. This is an angel, okay, and, and we have to remember that the angels are above us. The angels are greater than us. They're a greater order of creation than we are. But here this angel comes, and hail is an address, it's a title, if you will, or, or it's a way of addressing someone of respect and honor. And so this angel comes before the Blessed Virgin Mary and says, hail, full of grace, and the fullness of grace, that Mary is this vessel of grace prepared for the incarnation prepared for the coming of our Savior. So, hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. We celebrate today the Immaculate Conception. Going back to the God, uh, first reading for just a moment. In the first reading, we read about the aftermath, not of the fullness of grace, but the fall from grace. We read about the aftermath of the first sin. After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, that's the first sin, they ate the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve both. What happened? The Lord called the man, asked him, where are you? Not because he didn't know where he was, but because of this. He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid, so I hid myself. And so what is the aftermath of the first sin being manifested first and foremost is this separation between God and man. That man is now afraid of God, hiding from God. And so God reaches out to Adam. Where are you? Adam is afraid, he's hiding himself. And then this dialogue begins. And we see another consequence of the sin. 
not just the hiding from God, not just the being afraid. You've eaten from the tree, haven't you, basically? Then the man replied, and what did he say? He said, the woman you put here. And in, in really, you know, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, in one short sentence, he blames God and his wife for all his problems. And this separation between God and man, and then this separation between human beings, and sin is running amok in the world already. And we see this unfold. But we continue to read this story in Genesis. And we hear about the serpent. The woman said, the serpent tricked me. And who is the serpent? The dragon, the lion, the one prowling around seeking the ruin of souls. I'll tell a very quick story, brief story about uh, the life of John Paul II. John Paul II, you all know, you remember, many of you, most of you remember that he was shot. Someone tried to kill him. And you know, you try to kill the Pope and what happens? There's a big investigation, right? And everybody wants to know who did it, why did they do it, all of those things. And so there's this huge clamor to find out. And John Paul II didn't seem particularly interested not terribly worried about it. And they asked him, and he said, this is what I know. What I know is, I'm quoting from the letter of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, be sober and alert, your enemy the devil, your enemy is prowling like a roaring lion seeking to destroy you. Resist him, be firm in your faith. And John Paul II said, I know that the enemy prowls this world and his name is Legion and many fall under his spell and that's who attacked me. That's who attacked Adam and Eve and that's the spiritual battle that we're in. And so the angel comes to Mary and the angel says to her, hail full of grace. And we know she's been prepared, right? To be the vessel to bring into the world the Christ child who doesn't come threatening, does he? God knows that man is afraid of him. So God comes as innocent and humble and non-threatening as he can come. As a tiny little child born in humble circumstances. And this is the story of our salvation, isn't it? But the vessel was prepared, the Immaculate Conception of Mary. And she says, yes, this day, not to the serpent, but to the angel. She says, be it done unto me. And we celebrate her Immaculate Conception. We celebrate her yes. We celebrate the victory that Christ promises us as God comes to us humble, a tender child to inaugurate our salvation.